when my genre rotation returned to action near the start of July. I could not resist breaking down Roland Emmerich's 1996 summer blockbuster, Independence Day. A simple concept with a broad story arc. It gave all sorts of room for character development of an ensemble cast. This is a masterclass in narrative balance. And speaking of ensemble, the term protagonist in this video will refer to the core trio of President Whitmore, fighter pilot Steve, and consummate nerd David. The timestamps for each sequence can be found in the comment section for your viewing pleasure. Now, let's begin. We start, as always, with a focus on our protagonist, specifically their personality, their inner conflict, or their situation. The alien mothership arrives at Earth. President Whitmore balances family duties, while David the environmentalist saves the world, and Russell stumbles day to day, drunk and damaged. Next, we examine where, why, and how our protagonist exists in their world, with a focus on why they don't quite fit in. Earth faces a scenario it is not prepared for. Whitmore refuses to run and add to the chaos, while David discovers a countdown hidden from everyone, and Russell endures ridicule about an alien experience. Then a brief event happens, one that's never happened before. It's destined to lead all the characters away from their status quo. Battlecruisers descend into view, and the public now knows it's not alone in the universe. Which leads us to examine the effect of that something new to the status quo, specifically what's different now and what remains the same. The general public descends into panic. Steve the pilot gets more than a few seconds of screen time, while David deduces what is about to happen. We move along to the discovery that things are less than ideal, or else we explore how badly things are. Both scenarios are common. Connie refuses to entertain David's warning. Public hysteria grows to mass chaos while Steve seems reluctant to bring Jasmine closer, and Whitmore's family remains apart. Next, our characters dedicate their effort to a specified goal, and this is always narrower in scope than what the third act will demand. David rushes to the White House to repeat his warning. Russell joins the migration away from the ships, and Steve looks to place career over relationship. Then we run through a brief checklist of the main story elements that we can expect during this journey. David's mid-90s tech savviness, human emotions and baggage, and of course, the invasion of Earth. Which brings us to the brief event that launches our characters into the wild jungle of the second act. It's also called the Oh Shit Moments. A battlecruiser opens fire on a human envoy, and the hostilities begin. Oh shit. We follow our characters as they discover the new rules and expectations of their journey. These are always distinct to the narrative at play. The violent intentions of the aliens can no longer be questioned, nor can their immense destructive power. Next, our characters showcase their ability to grow and progress, and this is typically an external or physical beat rather than internal or emotional. Whitmore survives, thanks to David's warning, and Jasmine survives because she's smart and relentless. Then Russell and family join the RV migration. Then our characters face legitimate and understandable reasons to deviate from their stated convictions, agendas, or desires. Jasmine crawls from the rubble to find civilization gone. While Steve brings a fighter jet to a space battle, but their puny Earth missiles can't penetrate a force field. We endure the anxiety as our characters face an escalation of problems and complications. Puny Earth missiles can't break through still. The aliens dispatch their own fighter jets who decimate every squadron in the air. 
Then they turn their laser cannons to ground defenses. Next, our characters evolve internally or emotionally, and they do this by using elements of the plot or story, which they've gathered and learned so far. Steve tastes victory, and rallies from his losses when he captures an alien, while Russell's family finds unity and follows the crowd. Then exasperation leads to the reveal that Area 51 is the worst kept secret among government conspiracies. Then our journey weary characters come to terms with their ongoing struggles. Moments and elements of the first act are used to gauge their progress. Jasmine cobbles together what's left of the city's Act 1 population, while Steve reflects on the turn of events since his Act 1 vacation. Then Whitmore bears witness to the deepest secrets of his own Act 1 government, which results in a brief event that strikes at our protagonist's core conflict. The government possesses alien technology and understanding, and there's no turning back from here. We receive needed answers alongside our characters, which relate to both their external journeys and their internal conflicts. The aliens are easily killed beneath their armor and technology, and human beings must set aside their differences to survive a common threat. Next, our characters complete their narrow scope objective, yet discover that their victory is shallow or altogether meaningless and must complete a wider scope objective. Russell leads the RV migration to safety, but places them in the center of the invasion defense. And Whitmore gains a handle on the situation, but another countdown promises the end of humanity. While Jasmine reaches El Toro for safety, but she finds no salvation amid the burned out wasteland. Then our characters face an existential conflict that wounds their sense of self and identity or their physical journey. The captured alien wakes up during a procedure and declares the unavoidable extinction of mankind. Then Whitmore settles on a course of action, all out attack. We celebrate with our protagonist in light of an undeniable win which is always related to the rebirth in some way. David and Connie finally talk and begin to understand their feelings. Steve jumps into action, choosing Jasmine over career. Then the US military gets to use its favorite bomb. Next, our characters suffer a grand loss. This is always connected to their newfound inability to quit their journey. The atomic bomb didn't even scratch the battlecruiser's paint. Then Whitmore loses his wife, fracturing his family and creating doubt about his ability to lead. Then we experience a thematic freefall, as the main story elements are ramped up and thrown into upheaval. David forms a plan thanks to disposable dialogue to use an alien invasion tactic against them. Steve's fighter pilot experience makes him invaluable, the rebuilt alien fighter is operable again, and the world comes together despite their differences. Which forces us into a brief event that robs our protagonist of seemingly any hope of success. There are not enough military pilots to pull off another strike on the battlecruiser. We watch our characters realize that they cannot return to their first act selves, and they turn to face the wider scope objective. Russell answers the call for pilots to get his revenge. David volunteers for the mission to save the world, and Steve commits to Jasmine and Son. Then Whitmore gives a stirring speech with the movie's title in it. Next, our characters use the major swings of the story and their personal journeys to move towards the climax. Steve takes to the air, then into NASA territory. A battlecruiser moves to attack Area 51. David hacks the mothership with dial-up modem speed, then another, somehow better balanced dogfight erupts over the desert. Then the final confrontation plays out between our protagonist and characters against the antagonistic force. 
The attack on Area 51 commences. Russell shoves a probe up the battlecruiser's orifice, while Steve and David shove a nuke down the mothership's throats. Then they make their action-packed escape, which culminates in a brief moment where our protagonist finally, and oftentimes metaphorically, overcomes their place in the Act 1 status quo. The mothership blows up causing the collapse of the alien army and the preservation of humanity. We experience the direct aftermath of the climax. This can give our characters a moment to reflect on the situation or else wind down the action with a coda. Whitmore lands safely with the recruit fighters and the whole world celebrates the alien defeat. Next, we touch base with additional characters, typically to contrast them against the new status quo. Survivors at Area 51 reunite and celebrate, as the good news just keeps rolling in. Then we conclude with a tight focus on our protagonist, specifically to contrast them against how we met them at the opening. Steve, now a family man, keeps his family close, while David, Connie, and Whitmore find peace. And there you have it, Roland Emmerich's 1996 action blockbuster Independence Day adheres perfectly to the 29 point story structure every step of the way. And it demonstrates how well an ensemble cast can be written, despite minimum screen time. Now let's move on from government conspiracies and aliens, to government conspiracies and superheroes with our fifth dive into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Join me next time for Joe Johnston's 2011 MCU expansion, Captain America, The First Avenger. As always, thank you so much for your time. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this content, and consider commenting on and sharing this video to help the channel find its audience. Take care of yourselves out there, and I'll talk to you next time.